In today's day, a person of mixed race is considered attractive by a lot of people. This is also the same here in Indonesia. They gain attention because they are different and are alike and well accepted by many. But it's not always the case. Back in the 1940s, the Indo people, a term used to call people with a mix of Indonesian and Dutch races, were not treated kindly by the local indigenous Indonesian people, nor by the Dutch themselves, because they are considered not pure blood. They consistently receive threats and are kicked out of their house. What exactly happened to this one striving sub-race that is now almost non-existence in Indonesia? The Indo people are Eurasian people who live in or have ties to Indonesia. In its most restrictive definition, the word referred to person in the former Dutch Indies who had European legal status but were of mixed Dutch and indigenous Indonesian ancestry, as well as their descendants today. And Indo, in the widest sense, is people of mixed European and Indonesian ancestry. Indos are linked with the colonial culture of the former Dutch East Indies, a Dutch colony in Southeast Asia and a forerunner to the contemporary Indonesia following its independence shortly after World War II. The phrase was used to identify persons who were recognized to be of mixed Dutch and Indonesian blood, or it was a term used in the Dutch East Indies to refer to the Europeans with some Asian ancestry. The name Indo appears in print for the first time in 1898 as an abbreviation of the Dutch phrase Indo-European. Other titles used include Dutch Indonesian, Eurasian, Indo-Europeans, Indo-Dutch, and Dutch Indos. Explorers from Europe began to swarm to the archipelago in the early 16th century as the result of Europe's age of discovery. Many of them choose to or are compelled to live in the destination country. European missionaries arrive for commerce and trade, but others stay for religious reasons. Given that all European immigrants were men, quite a few people eventually married or even had children without having any legal marriage with the native. People of European ancestry were concentrated in Batavia. However, the population did not exceed 10,000 people. Their lives were harsh, as evidenced by the large number of people who died within a few months of moving to Batavia. Almost everyone is a Christian. They speak a language that is a blend of Dutch, Portuguese, and Malay. They are divided into two categories, trekkers and bridgeverse. Trekkers, or also known as expatriates, are Europeans who desire to return to Europe as soon as their responsibilities are done, whereas bridgeverse can adapt and subsequently live in Dutch East Indies. Many of these bleachers have Chinese and local wife. The two also have opposing viewpoints. Trekkers seek to keep European ideals in order to remain exclusive and elitist, whilst bleachers tend to immerse themselves in local values while remaining symbols of European culture. The Dutch, on the other hand, are more engrossed in local values than other way around. They were the backbone of Batavia's cosmopolitan middle-class society at the time. Segregation began to emerge in this culture as well. Trekkers and bridgeverse who do not have mixed blood regard themselves as higher than those who do. These mixed mislings are typically used in trade office to help with record keeping or field work. Their schooling was neglected and they interacted often with slaves. As a result, students are exposed to a wide range of local customs yet lack appropriate Dutch language abilities. Many Dutch or European descendants were even more competent in Creole, Portuguese, or Malay than Dutch by the end of the 18th century. Since the existence of the VOC, mixed Dutch and Indo family have been founded and reinforced throughout the 19th and 20th centuries. Major development in Europe at the beginning of the 19th centuries, as well as the introduction of the culture stealth cell, caused European Indonesian to expand throughout the archipelago, particularly in Java and portion of Sumatra, to manage plantation. Since the Indies Administration Act of 1854, which stressed the isolation of European Indonesian from the other component of Indonesian society, the split into three categories, European, foreign astronaut, and islanders has been enforced for the maintenance of law and order. Despite including Eurasian in the European category, 
This regulation reinforced segregation among Europeans and indirectly affected mixed group. As a result, the proportion of Totok, which also known as European Indonesian individuals who are not mixed, began to rise in comparison to the mixed group. Indos are frequently regarded as inferior by full-blooded Europeans, despite the fact that if their father recognized them as Europeans, they can have the same rights, advantages, and duties. According to the restriction in effect at the time, Europeans could not individually own property but might rent it from indigenous. The Indo, on the other hand, is paid less per hour than the Totok and Trekkers because of their poorer educational background. This caused resentment among Indos. Many European Indonesians began to associate according to ideology as a result of the liberalism movement and in the 20th century became a generator of the nationalism movement in the Dutch East Indies. Politically, European Indonesians in the early 20th century were divided into two groups, those who desired complete links with Dutch colonial and those who desired autonomy, and Totok people began to merge. The Indos faced difficult times during the Second World War, both in Europe and Asia. Germany conquered numerous nations in Europe and was unfriendly to non-native Europeans. During World War II, the Japanese Empire attacked and conquered the European colonies of the Southeast Asia, including the Dutch East Indies. The Japanese army was cruel to the people who lived in its colonies, particularly those from Europe who were also Indos. All native Europeans were interned in Japanese prison camps, while in those who demonstrate a connection with the indigenous face for their limitations. All males of working age were required to labor without getting paid. Many of them were able to go to nations such as United States, the United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada, where they may be admitted as well fugitive. It was a challenging situation for anyone who had ties to Germany. As a result, many Dutch East Indies residents opted to immigrate. Indonesia's opposition to Dutch attempts to retake control of the country forced the emotion of animosity among indigenous Indonesians toward those who supported the Dutch. They distrust everyone who looked like a European or favors recolonization. Few group the Indos, most of whom want to return to the Netherlands and many fled to British territory in Malaysia or Singapore. Bersia perpetrated a wave of violence against the Indos between 1945 and 1946. It is believed that 2,000 Indos killed in this tragedy, which some historians believe might be deemed a genocide. After 1949, the Netherlands began a wave of repartition of European Indonesian nationalists. When Indonesian sovereignty was recognized at the end of 1949, the number of repartiates increased. Many European Indonesians find it difficult to live in the Netherlands due to the rejection by the Dutch nationals who believe they are competing for employment. As a result, many of them re-immigrated to other nations like United States, Australia, New Zealand, or Canada. Since the new order, European Indonesians or Indos have constituted a relatively tiny proportion of the Indonesian population. Strict immigration rules prevent Europeans from entering Indonesia without first completing the lengthy citizenship process. They are typically culturally assimilated into Jakarta's cosmopolitan culture of the local culture in which they dwell. They are not considered to be a special subculture in Indonesia. In the Netherlands, things are a little different. CBS, a Dutch statistic office, reported that there are almost half a million Dutch citizens with Indonesian ancestry in 1990, 200 of whom were born in the Dutch East Indies or Indonesia. They are a prominent minority group in the Netherlands. With their cultural traits, statistically, they are still classified as the largest minority group and the most integrated minority group. The annual Pasar Malam Besar Festival also known as Tong Tong Fair, is a prominent activity of the Dutch European Indonesian community. European Indonesian descendants can also be found all over the world, either directly from Indonesia or through the Netherlands. Many of them are Americans, Canadians, or English. Some of them rose to position of prominence. Many individuals believe that European Indonesian will dissolve as distinct ethnic groupings, even among themselves. 
The most obvious explanation is that there is no longer any motivation to continue their lifestyle heritage. Young people in general tend to absorb the Western culture, which has been the inclination of the majority of Indos since the beginning. Indo culture is vanishing in Indonesia since the younger generation has become an important part of modern Indonesian society, even contributing to the establishment of separate Indonesian culture. The colonial society's character has shifted. The Indos progressively became Indonesian through time, gradually attaining to the same level as the Indos. They are advantageous and disadvantageous position loses its social grounding and hence vanish.